In this video, I'm going to talk about an absolute game-changing lightweight utility for the Angular Signals ecosystem that has been flying under the radar. I'm talking about the Signal State utility from NGRX. This utility has the potential to become the de facto way of building applications in Angular using signals. I'm going to explain you why I believe that in a moment and I'm also going to give you an overview of how to use signal state. Welcome back to the Angular University channel, I'm Vasco. Let's then dive straight into NGRX signal state. So what is this utility all about? This is a very lightweight utility that allows you to easily define signal-based state objects in your application. And you can see it as a more powerful alternative to the Signal uh, Core API when it comes to storing objects. So this type of deeply nested objects with several properties, uh, objects inside a property, etc. I believe that Signal State is a better way of handling this type of data at the level of the application. The reason for that is that signal state by default supports fine-grained reactivity and I'm going to explain that in a second. Now I just want to clarify that uh, the signal API is still important and useful in applications if we want to create signals with primitive types such as strings, boolean numbers, etc. But when it comes to objects, signal state is likely a better way of doing things in the application level and the reason why it supports fine-grained reactivity. So what is fine-grained signal-based reactivity? This is the ability that an application might have to only update the parts of the application that are interested in a certain data when and only when that data changes. So in our particular case, imagine that this signal state is not at the level of the component, that this would be at the level of a shared service consumed by several components in the application. So it's worth mentioning that signal state, you don't have to use it only at the level of components, you can use it in a directive, in a service, you can use it anywhere in your Angular application. Now imagine that there is some state being consumed by multiple parts of the application. There is a part of the application that is consuming this loading uh, flag and there is another part of the application that is only interested in the to-dos. With fine-grained reactivity, then the part that is interested in the loading indicator will only get updated, so the DOM of those components will only get updated if the loading indicator changes from false to true or vice versa. And the other part of the application interested in the to-dos will only get updated if there is some meaningful change in the to-dos list. If the to-dos list remains the same, then that part of the application should not be updated. This is ideal and this is fine-grained reactivity. Now, why does the signal API here why does it not support this level of fine-grained reactivity? Well, this is because the values emitted by this signal are the whole object. So we need to create and emit a new object independently of the part of the object that changes. So if the to-dos change, we need to emit a new value for the object. If the loading indicator changes, we need to emit a new value for the object. And the consumers of this state signal would get updated whenever any of this data changes. Now, in a scenario with fine-grained reactivity, that is not what we are looking for. So what does signal state do exactly to enable fine-grained reactivity? What signal state does is very simple. Signal state uses internally the signal uh, API of Angular and it inspects this nested object. Signal state is then going to create separate signals for each of these properties here. So these properties here get a signal, these shallow properties, and these more uh, nested properties like direction and query, they are going to get uh, signals in a lazy way the first time that they are accessed. But independently of that, 
The idea is to take every property and for each property using the signal API, create its own separate signal. This way, if a part of the application only wants to know about the loading flag, then they can subscribe only to this signal. If another part of the application only needs the to-do, then they subscribe to the to-do's signal, etc. So that's the idea of signal state. Let's have a look at this in action. How does this work? Let's see how to modify the state. So here in this to-dos list, the first thing that we're going to do in on init is to lower the to-dos into the signal state. So we are calling here lower to-dos and we are starting by setting the loading flag to true. So we are using here the patch state API to modify our signal state. Then we call here the backend. And then once we get the data from the backend, we save it inside our state using patch state again. Now, this is how we modify the state. And I probably should have started with how do we even access the state? Let me show you that here on ng on init, we are going to access our signal state. And here we can see via auto completion that we have here the signals for all these properties. We have a signal for loading and don't forget to invoke the signal in order to get its latest value. Otherwise, this won't work. We also have here the to do signal and we also have here. What was it called? The filter signal. Now, this is where it becomes interesting. I have covered here in another video the notion of deep signals. What we have here with filter are two deep signals. We have here a signal for the filter object itself. But if we use this notation dot direction, so we are accessing it just like if it was a plain JavaScript object. But in reality, we are accessing this nested signal here using this notation. If we want the deep signal for query, we just have to access query, etc. If this would be nested inside another object, we could go on and continue using this notation and access these deeply nested signals that way. Now that we know how to access the state and how to modify it, let's talk about how to compute derived signals from it. I have here an example, which is the filter to do's. So for that, all you have to do is to use the standard computed API that can be used to compute derived signals and then just use the deep signals that you need here in the body of the computed method as usual that is going to create a dependency between the derived signal and the source signals and return here the value of the derived signals. In this case, we are getting here a list of to do's and we are filtering them based on the query parameter here. This could be all pending or completed. Now let's finish off the video with some frequently asked questions about signal state. If you have been taking value out of this video, make sure to subscribe here to the Angular University. I'm going to create a few more videos about NGRX signals and other Angular related topics. Also, if you could please leave me a like here on the channel, that would always help me out. I would very much appreciate it. Thank you for that. Now, frequently asked question number one, do we need NGRX signal store in order to be able to use signal state? No, we don't. Signal state is an independent utility that can be used separately from NGRX signal store. If you don't need a centralized store solution for your application, you don't need to pay for all the boilerplate associated to a store solution just to have fine grain reactivity. Instead, you can use the much more lightweight signal state and you will get all the benefits of fine grained reactivity without any specific downside. I'm going to compare in a future video an application built with signal and with signal state so that you can see for yourself and take your own conclusions of what is best for your application. Next, we have another question, which is how does signal state compare with the signal API? Again, that will be the topic for one of the upcoming videos. Next question, 
do we really need fine-grained reactivity for performance reasons in most applications? For most applications, no, you don't. The default baseline level of reactivity that you will get with signal-based change detection and the Signal API should be more than enough for the vast majority of applications. As you will learn in a future video, Signal State also has other benefits compared to Signal that I think make a better case for using it in a systematic way in most applications, but I don't want you to get the impression that you absolutely need fine-grained signal-based reactivity in your applications, otherwise for sure that you're going to get into performance problems. That is not at all the case. So there are already enough performance myths here in the Angular world. I don't want to contribute to those. So in most cases, no, you probably don't need fine-grained reactivity in your applications, but I believe that there are other benefits to signal state compared to signal that I will cover in an upcoming video. If you are looking to learn more about Angular and Angular signals, check out my courses at the Angular University. You can watch here about 25% of the lessons for free. Any lesson without the red P you can watch for free without signing in to the website. So that's all I got for today. Let me know if you enjoyed the video in the comment section below. Please give me suggestions for upcoming videos. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Cheers everyone!